Hello and welcome to this demonstration of ANSYS AIM. In this short video I will show you how to set up and solve a simple linear static structural analysis. I will also discuss some issues that you should be aware of when working with parts that have sharp corners. The reason to be concerned about sharp corners, also referred to as reentrant or inside corners, is that they cause high stresses to develop in the area which may eventually lead to development of a crack and part failure. The elevated stress in these regions is referred to as stress concentration. This is a physical phenomenon and we know that in the vicinity of these areas the stress increases drastically as we approach the stress concentration region. In other words, stress concentration should be avoided whenever possible. The model I'll be using for this demonstration is a camshaft. This model has multiple stress concentration areas. The red arrow in the figure on the left shows uh, points to one of these areas. The figure on the right shows a better design approach that minimizes the effect of the sharp corner by introducing a fillet. This design avoids both the physical stress concentration area and the difficulty to simulate it using FEA. Now let's look at simulating the behavior of the crankshaft using AIM. First I'll do a stress analysis of the model with the sharp corners. Then I'll compare the results to those of the model with the fillet replacing the sharp corners. I have already imported the model into AIM using the uh, structural template. And the template has created a workflow for me to do a stress analysis. The tasks and their icon colors are cues as to what task needs to be completed next. Because I'm interested in the quality of the mesh in the vicinity of the sharp corners, I will take a look at the default mesh first to see if it's adequate for the task. By selecting the mesh task, I open the mesh data panel. Here I can click on generate mesh to generate the default mesh and view it. As you can see, in the vicinity of the sharp corners, the elements are relatively large. Therefore, I'll refine the mesh to get a better distribution of elements in that area. I have several controls that allow me to improve the quality of the mesh. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use the body sizing, which allows me to set the size of the elements by selecting volumes. I will enter a size of 5 millimeters and update the mesh to see the results. As you can see the quality of the mesh in the vicinity of the sharp corners have, has been improved quite a bit. I can continue this and use other controls as well but for the purpose of this demonstration I will use the current mesh. Next I'll move to the physics task and impose loads and boundary conditions. I can do this in the structural conditions group. I will impose a fixed support on one of the faces and impose a load of 5000 newtons on another. I can now proceed with my solution. Two result quantities have already been defined automatically because I requested a structural template. One is equivalent stress for the entire model and the other is displacement magnitude. I can simply execute the solution and bring everything up to date. As soon as the solution is done and I don't see any warning messages, I can look at the results of the analysis. The von Mises stress contours or equivalent stress contours show multiple high stress regions all very close to or at the sharp corners of the model as expected. 
the magnitude of the highest stress value is found to be 152 megapascal. This value is far below the yield strength of the steel material that was used in this model. However, because of repetitive loading, this may still be a cause for concern. Now let's take a look at the modified model. As you can see, I've modified the solid model by adding some fillets where the sharp corners were before. I've also added the same mesh controls as before and regenerated the mesh. But I noticed that in one area, the large fillet area here, the fillet is being represented by only one row of elements. Since this is a very high stress region and the stress in this area changes rapidly, I need to have more elements to capture both the high stress and the variation. So I will add another mesh control, in this case face sizing to that fillet and regenerate the mesh. The fillet area is now nicely represented by the uh, rows of elements that have been generated in that region. Uh, my loads and boundary conditions are exactly as before, so I can go ahead and update my results task, which will force another re-execution of the solution. I can now review my stress results. And as you can see, the maximum stress regions are about where we would expect them to be. However, looking at the detail section, we'll see that the maximum von Mises stress or equivalent stress in this case is only 121 megapascal, which is considerably lower than the model with sharp corners. In other words, adding the fillets has successfully improved our design by reducing stress in the critical regions. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.